Back in the Cambrian geological period, the first predators appeared in the depths of the world's oceans. Some of them climbed to the very top of the food pyramid. It's believed that some creatures came out of the water to escape these super predators. But the evolutionary arms race continued under new conditions of existence. After some time, creatures appeared here too, which can safely be called the masters of prehistoric land. In this issue, we'll talk about such animals and try to understand whether they were all predators. Or, in order to rule the planet, you don't have to eat everyone around you. Subscribe to the Age of Dinosaurs channel, and then you'll be the first to know about the release of new episodes. We also ask everyone to share your opinions in the comments and support the channel with likes. Your activity helps promote our videos according to the platform's algorithms and gives other science enthusiasts the opportunity to see them. The Carboniferous period can be safely called the Kingdom of Arthropods, the ancestors of modern spiders and scorpions, who until recently terrified the underwater world, began to actively conquer land. Many amphibians and emerging reptiles were easy prey for giant pulmonoscorpions. At that time, insects had quite impressive dimensions. This is due to the higher concentration of oxygen in the atmosphere. The respiratory and circulatory systems of arthropods under these conditions could work more efficiently than they do now. This made it possible to provide oxygen to such large creatures. Pulmonoscorpion, or Pulmonoscorpium, according to the latest data, could have a body length of up to 70 centimeters. At the same time, they could not have large claws. It's believed that these predators relied more on their poisonous sting when hunting. Claws were more often used to cut up helpless prey. These hunters lived in Scotland approximately 338 million years ago. They were described in 1994 by paleontologist Andrew Jerome. At the junction of the Carboniferous and Permian periods, another giant animal lived in Europe and North America. It was a centipede up to two and a half meters long, called the Arthopleura. However, scientists still continue to argue about its actual size. But even if the Arthopleura was two times smaller, its appearance and length are still respectable. In any case, a species of giant centipede, called Arthopleura armata, is the largest invertebrate land animal in the history of the planet. All found fossils of this creature are between 315 and 290 million years old. It's believed that these armored giants weighed up to 50 kilograms. It's unlikely that they had many natural enemies. Their body were protected by many interconnected plates. Each plate covered one of the body segments with a pair of legs. With such dimensions, the centipede had from 112 to 128 legs. The biggest mystery for scientists still remains the diet of Arthopleura. The fact is that not a single fossil has been discovered with an imprint of the oral apparatus of this giant centipede. It's believed that all the remains found are parts of discarded external skeletons. Like many of its relatives, Arthopleura shed their old armor as it grew and acquired a new one. But still, scientists believe that these creatures had large and powerful mandibles. They most likely ate mainly plant foods or carrion. Only adults could hunt smaller animals. It's also believed that the Arthropleura could function as modern butterflies. As the centipede moved through the thickets, it touched plants, and their spores fell to the ground or the back of the animal, so plants at that time could spread to different places. But in the Permian period, the climate on the planet began to change rapidly, and the arthropods gave up their positions. The main predators and the largest herbivores were the so-called beast lizards, or synapsids. Even at the end of the Carboniferous, they were practically no different from their relatives, diapsids. The main difference was the number of temporal foramina in the skull. As the name suggests, diapsids had two, and synapsids had one. But these groups took completely different paths than their evolutionary development, and if not for the Great Permian extinction, no one would have known about any dinosaurs. Synapsids became the real masters of the planet for many millions of years. They acquired a developed jaw apparatus and became warm-blooded. Their limbs began to be located almost under the body, and not on the sides of it. This made them faster and more agile. It's believed that the most recent animal lizards already had the prerequisites for the transition from laying eggs to viviparity. Also, some of the representatives of this group were covered with wool. All these characteristics gave the synapsids a good chance for further development. Less developed, cold-blooded diapsids were moved away from rich food resources and lived in desert and semi-desert zones. 
Among the largest and most powerful animals of that time, several rather interesting groups can be distinguished. The earliest representatives are Biarmosicus. These primitive animal lizards, like many other predatory synapsids, belong to the Therapsid order. They lived on our planet approximately 267 million years ago. Their remains were discovered in Russia, in the Perm Territory, the Udmurt Republic, and the Arkhangelsk region. Biarmosis was described in 1960 by Peter Chudinov. Some researchers classify it as a Gorgonops, and some as a Dinocephalus. The length of these predators did not exceed 1.5 meters. They, like many other carnivorous lizards, had elongated upper fangs. In fact, it was these creatures that became the first saber-toothed predators on Earth. Some signs suggest that the Biomosicus could lead a semi-aquatic lifestyle. They may have been fast and agile pack hunters. Now, you may have a legitimate question. Why can such small animals be called the masters of the sushi of their time? It's worth noting that there were no truly gigantic animals in the Permian period, and even such small animals could be the dominant predators in their habitat, especially if they lived in packs. But theories regularly arise among scientists that the Biarmosicus is not a separate species of animal, but an adolescent stage of development of a larger creature. This animal was named Eotitanosuchus. Its length could reach 4 meters, and its weight exceeded 100 kilograms. If B. Armosicus occupied the ecological niche of modern wolves or jackals, then Eotitanosuchus was a real super predator. At the moment, scientists have at their disposal only one incomplete skeleton of this giant. It was found in the same places where B. Armosicus lived, in the village of Yezhovo, Perm territory. Near the same settlement, the remains of creatures were found that, most likely, were the main prey of B. Armosicus and Eotitans. This herbivore is called Estaminaza and they were all described in 1960 by the same Pyotr Chudinov. The two species of these animals he described were subsequently recognized as one species. It's just that younger individuals did not have pronounced growths on their heads. But still, in the classification of these herbivores, there are now two species, Estaminosicus ural and Estaminosicus amazing. If you believe modern reconstructions, these creatures actually looked amazing. Imagine a 4-meter hippopotamus with fangs and growths on its head. These growths were located both on the top of the head and on the sides of the animal's muzzle. In some ways, they resemble the collars of the later Triceratops. The lateral growths on the skull of Estaminosicus made their heads equal in length and width. Estaminosicus are representatives of another group of synapsids, Dinocephalians. Most of them were carnivores or omnivores. By the standards of the Permian period, there were real giants among them. According to some researchers, the largest representatives of this group could reach 5 meters in length and weigh about 2 tons. A typical representative of the Dinocephalian suborder was the Deuterosaurus. They lived in the Urals in Siberia. The first finds were made on the territory of Bashkiria in the mid-19th century. This animal was described by the Russian naturalist of German origin, Eduard Eichwald, in 1860. Judging by the structure of the teeth, this Dinocephalus was not a pronounced predator. In fact, in the Siberian ecosystems of the Permian period, it performed the function of modern bears. With a body length of up to 2.5 meters and the presence of powerful jaws, they were the rightful owner of the Siberian forests of their time. It's believed that all Dinocephalians turned out to be a dead-end branch of evolution and left no descendants. But the real masters of the land of the Permian period are Gorgonopsians who appeared approximately 259 million years ago. This suborder has more than 20 genera. Its representatives lived in the territory of modern Europe, Asia, and Africa. Among them were both very small animals and the largest predators of their time. A separate issue is dedicated to these unusual animals on our channel. From it, you can find out why Gorgonopsids became the most advanced predators of their era. After the Permian extinction, giant reptiles became the masters of the planet for almost 200 million years. And, of course, dinosaurs became the rulers of the land. In different parts of the Earth and in different geological periods, the main predators were large carnivorous theropods. These were animals that walked on two legs and had powerful jaws. Smaller theropods hunted in packs and posed a serious threat to many herbivores, although the largest of them appeared only towards the end of the Cretaceous period. Among the most terrible predators of the era of dinosaurs are the following animals. Carcharodontosaurus, a genus of North African theropods from the late Cretaceous period, which had a length of more than 13 meters and a mass of up to 15 tons. 
Giganotosaurus, lived in South America approximately 97 to 98 million years ago. They grew up to 13 meters in length, possibly hunted as part of the pack. Spinosaurus had a length of up to 15 meters and a mass of more than 7.5 tons. They lived in North Africa from 112 to 93 million years ago, and they were most likely a piscivore. Tyrannotitan, another representative of South America, which had a length of more than 12 meters and a height of up to 4 meters and a mass of about 5 tons. This list can also include Maposaurs, Carnotaurs, Tarbosaurs, and dozens of other large predators. But the most formidable of them remains the Tyrannosaurus. Some theropods were longer or taller, but the T-Rex was the most massive of the largest predators of the age of dinosaurs. The timing of this video doesn't allow us to describe each of these unique dinosaurs in more detail, but all of them have repeatedly been the heroes of various episodes of our channel. We should not forget about the other giants of the era of dinosaurs, sauropods. These long-necked dinosaurs can also lay claim to the title of Masters of the Prehistoric Land. In all respects, they were superior to the largest predators of that time. And it's very doubtful that any of the theropods actively hunted adult healthy specimens of Argentinosaurus or Patagotitan. These multi-ton giants were not even particularly interested in what was happening under their feet. A similar situation is observed now. There's no more formidable predator on the African savanna than the lion. But a pride of lions will only attack adult elephants if they sense that their prey is vulnerable. Therefore, elephants that survive to adulthood, due to their invulnerability, can feel like the same kings of the land as large predators. Also, we could say the same about such a group of animals as crocodilomorphs. They cannot be fully considered the rulers of sushi. But it's difficult to find more suitable representatives for the title of masters of ancient freshwater bodies. For example, in Africa and South America, at the end of the Cretaceous period, such super predators were sarcosidae. These giant crocodiles grew up to 9 meters and weighed 2 to 3 tons. North America had its own crocodilomorphs, Dinosochi. They had a length of up to 10 to 12 meters and a body weight of up to 8.5 tons. True, only the smallest species of crocodiles managed to survive the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction. But even now, their descendants terrify both animals living near bodies of water or in the water and people. After the disappearance of dinosaurs, for a short time the most formidable predators became giant flightless birds. Ferroricos, the largest representatives of this family lived in Argentina from 13 to 20 million years ago. They were about 3 meters tall and weighed up to 300 kilograms. These birds ran no slower than small ungulates and could inflict very serious wounds with their massive beaks. Then, almost throughout the entire planet, mammals began to occupy the upper steps of the food pyramid. These were saber-toothed tigers, giant short-faced bears, carnivorous pigs, entelodonts, and many other predators. Among the herbivorous giants, we can recall mammoths and woolly rhinoceroses, Gigantopithecus, as well as Indracotherium, the largest land mammal in history. For a long time, reptiles tried to compete with mammals for the title of the planet's top predators. They were especially successful in this in South America and Australia. Examples include the giant snake Titanoboa and the huge monitor lizard Megalania. Titanoboa lived in the territory of modern Colombia 58 to 60 million years ago. It was up to 13 meters long and weighed more than a ton. Megalania lived in Australia from 1.6 million to 40,000 years ago. Theoretically, this monitor lizard, 5.5 meters long and weighing up to half a ton, could hunt the first people who settled the continent. Then, the legends about dragons immediately have another possible source. And now, in South America, there are quite large anacondas that may be descendants of Titanoboa. And on several islands of the Pacific Ocean, Komodo dragons live, which are still the most dangerous predators there. Now, the largest land predators in different regions are polar bears, as well as brown and large cats. Among herbivores, ungulates are large in size. Elephants, rhinoceroses, giraffes, moose, and buffaloes. But the top of the food pyramid is now occupied by the most dangerous and cruel predator, man. This strange primate is not distinguished by its large size or huge fangs, but none of the modern living beings are able to compete with it on equal terms and even huge monsters from the era of dinosaurs or later eras could defeat people at their current level of development. At the same time, man is not able, due to the peculiarities of our evolution, to rise above all this fuss. 
like the giant sauropods or intricatheres from the past. Cruelty and gluttony are inherent in man by nature, and man cannot behave differently. We express our gratitude to all of our viewers who watch our videos to the very end. If you're interested in learning about the described creatures in more detail, we recommend that you pay attention to other materials posted on our channel. Also from our other videos, you'll learn about the relationship between man and nature and the problems of modern human society.